<laughs> well, here we are again. Follow me to Apex, my friends. Reaper Hunter 23 here, welcoming you back to Let's Play Dragon Fable. Alright, so. It's been like three or four weeks since I've recorded this since then. Or since the last time I recorded. I recorded before I left for Texas a few weeks ago, and then uh, that's, that was the monster three hour recording session that like the past seven episodes have been coming from. Uh, yeah. But since then, I have bought the uh, dragon amulet. So, real quick, we're gonna go to Sunbreeze Grove. And I guess we can do... Uh, yeah, we're gonna go to Sunbreeze Grove first. I'll decide what to do after that in a minute. Travel map. Uh, <clears throat> Forgive me if my voice sounds a bit more, I don't know, hoarse or... Sorry, um, forgive me if my voice sounds a bit more hoarse or rough than usual. I know I wasn't exactly working with brilliance as far as the vocal department before, but last night I went to an amazing concert and, <laughs> well, there was a lot of screaming. Anyway, since I bought the dragon amulet, we can now customize what our dragon looks like and name him an interceptor after the uh, Shadow's Dog in Final Fantasy VI, and this is what... And yeah, there's plenty of options to uh, give your dragon as far as styles go. Give him these Spider-Man pattern, Spider-Man suit wings there. But I liked what I landed on the most. Um, dragon training is how you unlock the skills. Basically, you just have to grind out the same quest over and over. So, I'll do that before a major, like, uh, major instance that we'll need the dragon for. But, I'm not gonna do that right now. In fact, I'll do the, uh, the grinding is going to be done off screen, because that's just not fun to watch. Anyway, so... I can only do the first chapter of the Mogloween storybook. <laughs> because the rest of it involved certain elements of the story that were not two yet, because we just started. But anyway. But, you know, eventually I'll either buy the storybook that just lets me do all of the holiday events. I'll choose a specific time to just go and binge all of those, <laughs> because these aren't very long chains by any means. They're only at max for four weeks. <clears throat> and sometimes, or, I don't know, uh, I might be wrong in assuming that my little hiatus from the game, there were a few of Book 3's stories that actually intersected with the main goings on. Anyway. I, uh... Hold on. I don't know what's going on. It just kind of dropped us in one of these.
Alright. First walk will mean. The Cauldron Sisters are looking for a hand in their new candy making business and you seem to have all the qualifications. But it looks like one evil blue moglin has other ideas for the candy. I guess they didn't do one in 06. Alright, help wanted. A part-time candy consultant must be expertly skilled in supernatural combat with high resistance to fire, darkness, chocolate, and death. <laughs> For more information, visit the Cauldron Sisters in Doomwood. Alright. So. We'll look at all of them. Hi, have you come to interview about the part-time candy consultant position? Well, we three, well, four actually, are the Cauldron Sisters, which is extraordinaire. There are very few who can match our magical power. Or our business sense. Bubble, toil, and trouble. I'm Bubble. This little kitty here is my twin sister, Bubble. <laughs> oh, man. Mew. Our parents weren't very creative with the names. I am Toil, as the oldest cauldron sister, it falls on me to keep my younger sisters from causing too much havoc. I am Trouble, nice to meet you. We're getting out of the magic biz and into the homemade candy business. I'm still a little confused. How is this candy thing going to help us rule the world? <laughs> it isn't. Mix. How many times do we have to tell you that we don't want to use... We don't want to use our powers for world domination, silly. Excuse me. Yes, of course, I'm really excited to start making candy with your, you three, even if your talent and amazing beauty are going to waste on this. Heal. Mix. Mix may have his own ideas, but we wouldn't be here without him. I'm so glad that we bought him off Cicero. <laughs> I forgot that he was purchased from Cicero. Cicero had to use the Doom. I tried to use Doom Cauldron's powers to make more powerful weapons, but everything that he put into Mix came out as a pumpkin. So I talked him into selling us a Mix for a hefty discount. The best day of my life was that these three was the day that the my three magic magical mistresses bought me off that fat headed ninny. <laughs> I can't wait until they use my power to take over the world. <coughs> to make candy. Yeah, that's what I meant. We found that Mix was great for making potions and casting spells. But you can also gaze into the future and see far distant lands if you look into it. We also get several movie channels, basic cable, and some digital channels for free. I saw this amazing, amazing infomercial about taking control of your financial destiny that day. Or that, that day, I formulated a great business plan. Trouble explained us, explained the numbers to us, and mankind candy made much more sense. Or what? Oh, okay. I tried to turn that into mankind because of the N. Or, no, I don't know why. Uh, making candy, that typo threw me off, made much more sense than hiding in Doomwood casting spells. Plus, we love candy. Alright. Oh, hey, come back. Yes, I was here for that. Uh, Alright, quest. We're almost ready to make our first batch of candy, but we've come up with a we've come up with a really good recipe. But we have one small problem. Mix is still under the curse of the Pumpkin King, Jack Strife. So Pumpkin King and Jack, that makes sense. I understand every bit of that. But why is his last name Strife? We've woven a spell around Mix so that the next time Jack Strife is defeated in battle. The curse should break and we can free and we can make candy. Instead of only making pumpkins. So that's why Cicero could only make pumpkins. 
And with the ingredients gathered, the Cauldron Sisters can begin up cooking some. There can begin cooking up some carnage. Candy, candy. I meant candy. That they used to rule the. That we sell to candy lovers everywhere. All right, that they can sell. Sell to candy lovers everywhere, and then they will be rulers of the. Then we will be rich candy makers. All right, you guys are no fun. All right. Lagoon. Lagoon goon. Alright. I approve. Wow, they're throwing uh, things that are levels above me this time. Alright, well. That won't be much of a problem. Oh yeah. For the purposes of the uh, next string of quests we'll do after the Mogloween thing. I had to grind out a specific quest over and over. They love making you do that. Most of the time it's for class progressions that aren't your uh, standard rogue and stuff. Which is why you won't really see me bothering with using much of the other classes, because really there's only one other one that I've ever felt was really worth my time. That's not to say that all of the other classes are bad. In fact, I'm, they're probably significantly better than uh, just your standard stuff. Oh, and by one other class, I mean besides the eventual upgrade to the rogue that we'd get. But anyway, nah. It's mostly a case of me being lazy there, because I'm sure the advantages of other classes is superb. I just don't really feel invested enough in get making them good. But anyway, the next quest chain we will be doing is the, uh, warlike quests. I feel like that's a good thing to get into before we start doing, like, the bulk of the book one, which is the orb gathering. I think what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to balance out, like, doing one of the We'll do like one orb saga quest line, and then I'll find another side story to do. Because there's a bunch of other major plot stuff to get done. Why didn't I... Ouch! 58? Blood wolf. Aha, I've got you now, Jack Strife. That's Pumpkin King. Pumpkin King. Jack Strife now. Oh, so you were the Pumpkin Prince last year? What? <laughs> no, I'm just the Pumpkin King now, that's all. Well, you can't just be the king. It's a title of nobility. You have to be of a royal bloodline to become king. What? Where is your kingdom? Kingdom, I... You... You, you just listen. I just made myself the Pumpkin King, okay? Okay, fine, then I'm a king too. You can't just... Okay, if I am the Pumpkin King, what are you... If I... Yeah, okay. If I am the Pumpkin King, what are you the king of, hero? I'm the king of kicking your teeth in, town. Let's go, court for... <laughs> oh, man. Alright. That was fun. Why did everything else have higher levels? 
than me, but Jack himself was, uh, does he resist immobility? 50-50. Well, I'll take out the pumpkin pies first. Ow. But Jack is still rubber banded to my level. I should have tried stunning him at least, but whatever. <clears throat> oh, he might be weak to fire. Yeah, alright. I don't know if this will be a super big. Okay. No, it won't. <laughs> Sometimes if I, even if my uh, weapon is a few levels under what you would imagine them being, or what I am currently using, if they're weak to it, sometimes it uh, still really helps. Try dazing him now. No, oh, but at least I got the dot. Oh, I think the new move would have been aimed. It was either that or the Wild Daggers. I don't remember which one I would have gotten from leveling up to level 11. But aimed is nice because it gives you a bit of an attack buff for the next few turns. And obviously the multi-throw is great for dealing with little henchmen. the Pumpkin King, Jack Strife, and Broken the Curse on Mix. Return to the Cauldron Sisters and see what they need help with next. Alright, what's next on the list? Great, you broke the pump the Pump King's curse. Mix is ready, and we have all the ingredients we need to make our magical candy. We are almost ready to go, or ready to begin. Bubble, do you have our recipe? Recipe check. Trouble, do you have the ingredients? Ingredients check. And I've got the spell. Let's begin, ladies. The moon is high in the harvest sky, and now the ha time has come. To make some sweet candy. Sweet and rich. To make some candy. Sweet and rich, except for bubblegum. Aw. <laughs> we gather here before our cauldron deer, prepared to cook all night. But what's the point when we can leave it to mix and or when we can leave and mix can do it right? Wait, what me? So we begin to toss them in pieces and the pieces and the parts and hope we three sweet the sweet candy won't make our customers um sick. That didn't rhyme toil, and there are four of us. Mew. Now the ingredients. <laughs> I like how it, First of all, she said she had the spell ready, but that ending bit sounded like it was improvised and ran out of dramatic stuff to say. Spider's web, gecko's eyes, glowworms still alive. Ear of bat, sneevel hat, and yellow number five. What? And now we add our very special ingredient, Mognip. Moglins go crazy for this stuff, but be careful. A little of this stuff goes a long way. Okay, we're all set. Now we just need to let Mix simmer the ingredients for a few minutes and we can start selling it. Sisters, let me show you what my show you my business plan while we wait. As our part time candy consultant, you you should see this too. Let's go. 
it's super weird going back into the early stages of the game sometimes because a lot of sound effects that I feel like should be here, or a lot of things that I feel like should have sound effects on them, don't. Oh, sure, they'll take that rogue with them, but not me. I suppose I'll take a nap while this muck cooks. No, don't fight over me, girls. There's enough cauldron to go around. Mmm, that smells pretty good. Oh, so we're back. <laughs> It seems like something's missing. Needs more Magnip. A lot more. <laughs> I thought he was just gonna pour it all out. <laughs> but he just dumped the bag in. Without... That was funny. That's more like it. <laughs> I'm out of here. Oh no, Zorbag hat has added a secret ingredient of his own to the Cauldron Sisters candy recipe. We hope this doesn't have any, have any terrible effects on this holiday. There's a box over here. Open DA chest. Gargoyle helmet. I don't exactly have a super amount of... Um, gold, so we're just gonna melt. The candy should be just about ready. Are you ready to taste it? Eat some candy. Alrighty. I like how did this, it seems like the recipe would have been for one batch of a very specific candy, not this catch-all grab bag of stuff. Mmm, this candy is great. It has a really unique flavor. I like that her snake hair is holding the lollipop. That would be the Magnip, our secret ingredient. Uh-oh, I've got some bad news. Mew. Bubbles, right. You always have bad news trouble. It's uh, kind of in her name, to be fair. I finished the inventory of our ingredients. Someone put a little too much Magnip in. How much is a little too much? All of it? <laughs> <laughs> the candy will be fine for most humans and monsters, but it might have a slightly different effect on a moglin. If a single mog moglin even gets a whiff of this stuff. Twigo vision. Uh oh, why is that moglin looking at us like that? Mmm. Candy fish, candy fish, candy fish, candy fish, candy fish. Oh. God. Okay. He's pretty big. Of course, he resisted the immobility effect. Why wouldn't you? Ow. Alright. Excuse me. Um, yeah, all right. Nice. Over a hundred damage behind that one. Uh, screw it, we'll hit him with some poison. Not cool. It it was lost on me just how hard he, <laughs> the stupid Moglin has been hitting me. Jesus. Okay. Maybe I should have uh, planned out what I was doing a little better with using aimed shot, but I think I, I think I'll be able to eke this out if I'm careful. Wow. All right, let's hit him with that one more time. Now we'll 
heal. 